I don't know why I have Netflix. I can never find anything I want to watch. Apart from Tiger King, which I was hooked on, and the Louis Thoreau documentaries, I don't really see anything on there which interests me. I decided to have a quick last scroll through before bed to see if anything grabbed my attention before saving myself $8.99 a month. British sitcoms, seen them. Big Bang Theory, finished it. Some drug documentaries, started it but I couldn't get into it. Hey, what about that show with Michael Sheen and Lizzie Kaplan? I love the first series. Nope, not on here. I was about to delete my account when I saw a new category. Adventure slash intrigue. What the? That's not a category. Fascinated. No. Intrigued. I clicked. There was one show in this category and something wasn't quite right about the screen. The Netflix logo was off somehow. Slightly distorted and there is an exclamation mark after the logo. Pretty sure that's not usually there. The thumbnail for the show was a screen of static, and the show's title was called Lauren Ibsen 2.1. I clicked and expected the preview trailer to autoplay behind, as it does with most other shows, but all I could see was a black screen with the word begin, followed by a flashing cursor. It looked just like the old MS-DOS games you could play in the early 90s. It was getting late and I felt slightly unnerved by this seemingly secret show that I had stumbled upon, but intrigue got the better of me, and I clicked play. A jerky, glitchy fade out of the main menu screen presented the MS-DOS type screen and showed simply the words, You ready? Followed by the flashing cursor. I stared at the screen. Nothing happening. I wiggled the cursor on my old PS3 to check the status bar of the show. 48 seconds had elapsed. I rolled my eyes and got ready to exit this crap when I was jolted by the sound of my Alexa blasting insanely loud thrash metal. I was both terrified and mortified. I live surrounded by other flats. It's late and they're going to kill me. The wall shook. My clock even fell to the floor. Instinctively, I screamed, STOP! And with that, blissful silence. My heart was racing. I braced myself for furious hammering on my door, floor and my ceiling from justifiably livid neighbors. But there was nothing. Just silence. I unplugged the Alexa. I didn't want that creepy thing spying on me anyway. I glanced up at the TV screen. Under, you ready, was simply a winky face. Great, my TV is retro winking at me. I reach for the control again. That's enough Netflix for tonight. And no, I definitely won't still be watching. As I grabbed the controller, a new line of text appeared. Enter your name, player one. Let's have some fun. I stared blankly again. I eye-rolled hard again. This is an old PS3 and I don't have a keyboard. There's no way I'm playing this stupid game. Also, what the heck is happening here? And can someone see me? Ever since I got the Alexa, I was paranoid that I'm being spied on. Wait, more text. Say your name, player one. If you would like to enable voice mode. My mouth was dry and I curled my top lip. This was becoming extremely uncomfortable. Then, the first sound that I had heard in minutes startled me from the TV speakers. It was not a frightening voice, yet it was unsettling. If you have ever heard the relaxing but creepy BBC shipping forecast, the voice was similar to that. Please say your name so we can begin the game. Do not try and exit the program. I jiggled the controller again, trying to exit. The voice became more urgent, but maintained its politeness. I asked you not to exit. Please say your name so we can begin the game. The sooner we play, the sooner we finish. Do not try and exit the program. 
I tried to think of the most gender neutral name so as to not give away my identity. Uh, Alex, I stuttered. Not quite. Try again. The condescending voice replied. Grasping at straws here, I offered. Sam, with much more confidence. I heard a sharp exhalation of air into a mic. The sort of sound you would emit if you see something fairly amusing on Reddit enough to warn a nasal exhale, but not quite a full laugh out loud. Nice try, Rebecca. The voice replied. You're Rebecca because it was the most popular girl's name in the UK in 1994. I felt sick to my stomach. A new line of text appeared and the voice read it through these speakers to me. You're standing in your tiny flat in Salford, Greater Manchester, England. I gasped with how terrifyingly specific this was. How did it know? Where would you like to go next? The bathroom or the kitchen? Dang. I wanted to get out of there completely to be honest, but I could see the kitchen from the TV. The bathroom would mean leaving the TV screen, and I didn't trust whoever or whatever I was talking to. I chose the kitchen. You move to the kitchen, open up the fridge and look on the top shelf. No way. What is going to be in there? I don't want to play anymore. Fine, Netflix, I'll keep my subscription. I won't cancel. I must have been taking too long to action anything because the voice became condescending again. Take your little pink fluffy slippers you bought off Instagram last week and open the fridge, Rebecca. Top shelf. No need to be scared. I cringed that this person knew so much about me. Could he see me through the TV? Don't be stupid. With a deep breath, I braced myself for whatever was going to be in there, tensing my arms, ready to slam it shut if it was some kind of trick. I opened it aggressively, and the light came on. Nothing. Yep. Barely any food as it was a week until payday, and no scary demon or a severed head. I tiptoed in my pink fluffy slippers to see the top shelf, and there was a notebook. An A5 sized sparkly notebook. The voice from the TV returned along with a new line of white text on the black screen. You open the notebook to the back page. Dreading what I would find, I open the notebook to the back page. There is a list of hastily scrawled words and a bullet point list. To my horror, it was my Twitter handle, my Instagram username, my name on Facebook. I thought that I said it to friends only. My Snapchat account name my phone number and two email addresses. I looked up from the notebook, horrified, and gasped as I saw a new screen. The MS-DOS text screen wasn't there. There is a dark room with a camera and a light illuminating a desk and a chair with a green screen behind it. The view I could see was from above looking down, and there was a man sat at the desk shuffling papers. The most ordinary looking man. A nice looking man. The sort of man you would trust to read you the early evening news. That's all from me tonight. Join me tomorrow where we will be playing the next installment. He said cheerily into the camera. And then looked up at the view I could see. Looked right at me and winked. The screen went black and the familiar window popped up. Are you still watching Kiss Chase on Netflix? Continue watching. Exit. What? It wasn't called Kiss Chase. I would have remembered that. Exit. Suddenly, my Netflix home screen was overwhelmed with recommendations of programs, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, the Fire Festival documentary, Love is Blind. I guess everything I guess is a typical millennial would like. Exit, exit, exit. I looked at the clock on my brother's old console that he had handed me down when he upgraded to his PS4. 6.30 That can't be right. I couldn't have been on it for 8 hours. I have work in the... My iPhone alarm went off. 6.30 It can't be. I haven't been to bed. I have work in 2 hours. 
I turned off the TV. Perplexed, I stumbled to bed. My phone pinged and I had a WhatsApp group that I don't recognize that I had been added to by an unknown number. And my heart sank again. Lorem Ipsum 2.1 We play the next part together tonight and the time will absolutely fly. If I found the notebook containing all my social media links in my kitchen, what the heck would I have found if I chose the bathroom? I was deeply unsettled by last night's activities. This weird, interactive game I found on my Netflix menu. There were so many questions. Why was the Netflix logo distorted? Had it been hacked? Who was watching me, and how, or was it an elaborate prank? Not to mention, where did the time go? I couldn't concentrate and work. I was clearly distracted to the point my boss sent me home after lunch. She said, You're not yourself today. Take the afternoon to go get yourself together and we'll see you tomorrow. I was lucky to have such an understanding boss. I got home, blocked the WhatsApp number, and despite being unnerved, I had a morbid curiosity of what might happen next. Plus, if this guy knew stuff about me, I wanted to know what else and I wanted it to stop. I left work at 1pm and arrived back at my flat to darkness. Confused, I turned on the TV and checked the time on my TV and on my iPhone. Both read 10.30pm. How? How am I skipping parts of my day? It's almost like someone is fast forwarding through my life to get to the part that they want to watch. I searched my flat for a sign. Dirty dishes were on the side, and the microwave door opened, suggesting that I've eaten tonight. But I've only just had lunch and left work. Also, I had no food in the fridge last night, so I would have to go and buy something on the way home. So many unanswered questions here. I didn't want a load of Netflix. I was intrigued, but scared. A new WhatsApp from an unknown number. Blocking me was a silly move. Turn on Netflix. It's time for the next level of the game. I load up Netflix reluctantly. Keep watching Kiss Chase. I shook my head. I'm sure it wasn't called that last night. I searched for the adventure intrigue category. It had gone. I clicked Kiss Chase. The MS-DOS type screen returned and I hit play. Static. Old square text and numbers like 80s home videos appeared in the bottom right. Loading next tape. 2.2. The text screen loaded. Welcome to the lounge, Rebecca. The kitchen is to your left. The bedroom behind you and the bathroom to the right. I shuddered. The exact layout of my flat. Voice mode is activated. Where would you like to go next? Um, the bedroom. None of the options were appealing. You move to the wardrobe and take out the little red dress. Little red dress? I don't own any dress, let alone a little red one. I paused. Bad move. The Alexa, the one that I had turned off and unplugged last night. Fired up this time, not with unbearably loud thrash metal, but window-rattling classical music, searing strings and majestic horns. My ears burned. Stop! I shouted again, like last night. Blissful silence. Again, anticipating immediate abuse from angry neighbors, I waited. There were no complaints. Silence. I walked backwards to the bedroom, keeping my eyes on the screen, and darted into the bedroom. Sure enough, there is a long, red dress in the wardrobe. I heard the TV from the other room. Put it on. I cringed hard. No, I don't want to. I waited. If you abort this mission, you can choose to go to the bathroom or the kitchen. No way I was going in the bathroom. That was too far, and I needed to keep my eyes on the screen and keep my wits about me. I took a deep breath. The sooner I played this, the sooner it would be over. 
the kitchen. I said defiantly, and I stomped bravely through the lounge into the kitchen, which adjoined it. I jumped as I saw someone sat at my kitchen table. It wasn't who I expected. Sitting at my table was a girl with a camera set up. She was around my age, pretty, very pretty but shall we say had some work done. Filled out lips, a smooth forehead, huge blue eyes and long blonde hair. Looking directly at the camera, she said, Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, today we're going to be trying on my haul from Topshop and Nasty Gale. Link in the comments below. I roll. She's one of those annoying British YouTubers who film videos of them trying stuff on. Can she see me? I clear my throat. She continues, flicking her hair and pouting into the camera. She can't see me. I look at the TV. New line of text. Meet your new friend, influencer, and YouTube personality, Eden. My eyes rolled so hard, they almost came out the back of my head. Eden, the Insta Airhead, of course she had a dumb name. I bet she starts every sentence with, So, and starts every video with, Hey you guys. I bet there's a crying apology video in there somewhere too. So today, I'm joined by Rebecca from Netflix documentary Kiss Chase, who's going to help me try on some of these clothes starting with an amazing red dress, perfect for special occasions. Sorry, what Eden? Rebecca from a Netflix doc. Dang, I need to redo that, she giggled. With a flick of her hair, she stuttered again. So today, I'm joined by my oldest friend Rebecca, who's going to help me try on some of these clothes starting with the red dress. Links to Rebecca's socials in the comments. I stood there. She still hadn't looked at me directly. Until now. With the snap of her neck, she looked at me with crazed eyes and a snarl. The sickly sweet influencer act was dropped. Put the red dress on. Why? Put the red dress on, or we can't get to the next level. She said, changing her tune again. I went to put the dress on, and I returned to the TV. Static. And Eden had gone. Disappeared. No YouTuber and no camera. MS DOS screen returned with a new line of text. That's all we need for tonight. Exit game or continue. Was that it? Exit game, I volunteered. Is that an option? Amazingly, it was. I didn't even need to exit Netflix. The app just crashed. I turned off the old PS3. That was easy. It was 10.33. Three minutes had passed. Wow. I had my whole night left. Off to bed I go. My alarm went off at 6.30. I turned it off but was assaulted by notification after notification after notification. Whatsapps, Snapchats, Facebook messages, emails, texts, and Instagram messages. Uh oh, what were you thinking? Um, what the heck? I saw the video, are you okay? Call me. Wow, that's insane. I saw your YouTube video last night. Are you okay, babe? Why would you do that? Okay, so I don't want you to be at work tomorrow. Funny thing, though. Your family are gonna go nuts. That made me sick. What the heck? Panicking, I got to work and was immediately called into a meeting with HR. What you did last night completely violates our company's social media policy said James, our head of HR. You've absolutely humiliated the organization. Sorry, Rebecca, but we have no choice but to let you go. Clear your desk and say nothing to your colleagues. I returned to my flat, absolutely devastated. What did they all see? I decided to share this turn of events with my long-distance boyfriend. We met online six months ago. He's in the US and I'm in the UK. I told him about the weird Netflix show, but before I could elaborate, he said he also had a weird experience last night. I started playing the new Sims last night, he said. I created myself and you just for fun, but something odd happened. 
What? I asked worried. I went to the bathroom and when I came back, your sim was moving herself around. She moved to the bedroom and put on a red dress and started acting. Acting disgusting and possessed around our virtual home. It was so weird. You were bending over back and forth the waist, smashing your head on the floor. I thought my game was glitching. My phone pinged. New number, unknown. Get ready for level 3. We play tonight. The first night the game freaked me out by knowing everything about me. The second night, I don't know what exactly happened but now I've lost my job. Whatever this new show is, it's ruining my life. I had no job to go to today so let's just get this over with. I fired up Netflix. I texted my boyfriend and asked him to delete his sim of me. I need to erase as much information as I can. Netflix didn't even entertain me with a menu screen. It went straight to static in that blocky 80s VHS text. Loading next tape, 2.3. The familiar voice made itself known. Voice mode activated. Check your Snapchat, Rebecca. Dread plummeted to my stomach. What now? I opened the bright yellow icon. New message from... Ha 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 ha, lol, 666. It's me. A Snapchat of me from the POV of my TV. How? New command. Check your WhatsApp. A new message from a new number. A weird close-up video of me from under my chin moving around my flat. I was creeped out. New command. Check your online bank account. I gasped. I opened up my bank app. All of my money had gone. I didn't have much anyway, but what little savings I had in my current account, both red, zero. All my money was gone. This game and whoever or whatever is behind it is determined to ruin my life. New command. Open YouTube on your phone and check out Rebecca's new red dress. I quickly opened it and found the video. It looked familiar. The YouTuber and her mate try and close. But wait, the main presenter looked like me. Look, I'm a girl in my mid-twenties and I'm a more of a tomboy. I don't wear dresses and I wear minimal makeup. Yet this person was me as if I had been given a makeover. The same mannerisms, same personality. But my plain face was pumped up and perfect. My drab brown hair was long and blonde, and I seemed to be putting on an act. My companion, however, was glitchy to say the least. What started as a timid looking girl became a character. A weird, pixelated face jerking between stimulation and a normal face. The new version of me looked to the camera and said, Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is my ugly duckling friend, Eden, who we're going to make look a whole load better with a makeover. It seemed the YouTuber from last night and plain old me had swapped for the broadcast. The broadcast, I don't recall as the game, ended once I put on the dress and returned to the screen last night. The pixelated girl returned wearing the red dress and the new influencer version of me stood side by side with her in front of the kitchen table. With a manic smile, new me raises a hand, places it behind Eden's head very slowly, and then smashes her head into the table in a completely unexpected assault. I would never do anything like that. I was horrified. Laughing, the new me pulls her up by her hair and repeats the action over and over again, until the pixelated, glitchy Eden turns redder and redder, matching the dress. Doesn't she look pretty? Do you guys like her makeover? The video ends abruptly. New command on my TV. Watch it again. No way, I don't want to watch that again. I'm riddled with anxiety and fear and I'm still trying to process what I just saw. Watch it again so we can continue this level, and then we can end. Hesitantly, I reloaded the video. Normal me is back and no other character. I'm in the red dress and I look into the camera saying, Check this out you pigs. Reaching down off camera. I put on a hideous pig mask and sleazy dance music plays as I start some creepy routine 
stripping off out of the dress. I don't want to see any more. I quickly hit stop. I'm mortified. Watch it again. There's more? Please, no. The next video is long. 47 minutes and it's normal me doing some kind of makeup tutorial. Quite normal really, two minutes in. I really want to cut to the chase here and I don't have time to wait to watch the rest of the video. So I skip forward. 40 minutes in and I've transformed myself into a hideous, ugly old clown. Long fake teeth, yellow contact lenses, a face of bright colors. I'm reciting some kind of numbers over and over again. This explains the varied messages from my friends. They didn't all see the same video. New command. Watch it again. Normal me is back sitting at my kitchen table, looking down the lens. Hi, this is Rebecca. I work a crappy admin job at a crappy company called Enigmatica in Manchester, UK. And boy, could I tell you some things. I really, really didn't want to watch whatever it was that led me to being fired from work earlier today. But I had to. Morbid curiosity and I need to finish this level so I can end this stupid, dangerous game for good. We've done so well because Jonathan Daniels, head of IT, hacked our competitor and stole all of their contacts. <laughs> Whoops. What? That isn't true. If it was, how would I know anyway? The reason HR matters never get resolved in this place is because the manager James is having an affair with our head of finance. Hey Lisa. That isn't true either. James' wife works on my team. They're really solid and they have two great kids. We don't even have a Lisa working in finance. And another thing. Every manager in this place is a bully. Particularly Jane Anderson. I wouldn't trust her as far as I could throw her. You know what you did, Jane. I cringe so hard. Jane's like my work mom. She's my line manager and the sweetest, happiest person that you could ever meet. She's been trying to get me out of my entry-level position and on courses so I can get a better chance at promotion. I didn't want to see anything anymore. New command. Say one to exit the game now and start to rebuild your life and career from scratch. Say two to continue the next level tomorrow night and erase the damage of the past two nights. What a choice. It would be far easier to just delete the past two nights and pretend they didn't happen. But what would that involve? I need to pause the game, bide my time and gather my thoughts. Pause game, I instructed, and it worked. Game paused, said the voice of the game, before adding, for now. I've only spoken to my long-distance boyfriend about this briefly, but he's not much of a help across the pond. I need to speak to my mom. Had she seen any of this, and does she know? She always makes me feel better. I dialed her number. Hello, my darling, and how are you? She wasn't mad at me. She doesn't know. Not good, mom. Something weird is happening to me. I wish Rob had never given me a stupid old PS3 when he upgraded. Rob? Yeah, when he got his PS4, he gave me his old console. I really just use it to watch Netflix and play some old games while... Anyway, listen. Darling, are you okay? Who's Rob? Is she for real? For frick's sake, Angela. My big bro mom. Um, your son? Silence. Mom. Your big brother, darling. Where's this all come from, sweetheart? Are you okay? I can't believe this. Am I going insane? Mom. Rob, my big bro. Come on, I need to talk to you about... She snapped. Are you on drugs or something, Rebecca? Snap out of it. You don't have a big brother. You're an only child. You know this, and your dad and I bought you that PS3 when it came out as a Christmas present. Mom, how can you just forget about Rob? Maybe she's getting dementia. No, she can't. I tried to refresh her memory. Mom, come on now. Rob and I used to play football in the back garden. He did really well in school. A star pupil and is now a lawyer in London. 
Remember us having swimming races in the pool on holiday in Spain. You must remember that we laugh for hours. We're both so competitive. Silence. Mom? Mom took a deep breath. Rebecca, you've never had a brother. Not in this lifetime, anyway. What does that mean? She carried on. The boy you played football with in the garden was our next-door neighbor, Neil. The swimming races in Spain were with a little girl we met from another family on their holidays. Sweetheart, I'm worried about you. You're not well. Stay there, my love. Stay in your flat. Your dad and I will be there in an hour. First, this new Netflix game knows everything about me. Then it glitches my timelines and gets me fired. And then I see him being filmed in my own flat by something I can't see. And somehow, within a three minute time frame, four videos were made of me broadcasting weird content to YouTube, which I don't remember. The console I used to watch Netflix was handed down to me from my older brother Rob when he bought a PS4, who now, I'm being told by my own mother, never existed. Excuse me for feeling as though I'm going out of my goddamn mind. I waited for my mom and dad to arrive. They live an hour away. I paused the game on Netflix to buy my time given my two options at the end of the last level installment. Say one to exit the game now and start to rebuild your life and career from scratch. Say two to continue the next level tomorrow night and erase the damage of the past two nights. I turned off the screen. I needed to speak to my parents before deciding what to do. Angela and Peter arrived at my city center flat from their little home in the countryside. They rejected an offer of a cup of tea and cut straight to the chase. Look, love, where does this idea of a big brother come from? Asked my dad. I can't get my head around this. My entire 25 years on this planet, I have memories and memories and memories of my big brother. Rob, the sporty guy. Rob, the amazing guy who aced his exams. Rob, the successful lawyer working in London. I was so proud of him. We played football together, we fought, we looked out for each other, like any brother and sister. We just need to tell her. My mom pleaded, looking at my dad in desperation. Dad took a deep breath. Look, love, there's something your mom and I never told you. Intrigued. Go on, dad. He looked at my mom, almost as if for permission, and she nodded. We've been best friends since we were ten years old, you know that. It was true. Mom and dad were childhood sweethearts. He took a deep breath and continued. When we were fifteen, your mother became pregnant. We were terrified. Not only were we both underage, but we both had plans to go to college after our exams. It wasn't the right time for a baby. We were too young, and we weren't in a financial position to raise a child. My mom cut in. Not just that, darling, but you know how strict your grandfather is. He would have been furious. Absolutely furious. So, your dad and I had this terrible secret that we needed to get rid of. We couldn't go to a doctor because we were both in rage. The doctor would have been obligated to tell our parents, and your dad would have been in so much trouble. And so would I. I felt sick. I could see this tale was about to take a very sinister turn. And I really didn't want to know what happens next. Dad picked up the story. We didn't have much choice but to sort this out the backstreet route. He said, looking guilty as sin. We got the train into Manchester on a Saturday morning in 1980. Your grandparents were going shopping. There is an untold rule in the city that if you got yourself into a situation like this, you needed to go to one-armed Nell, an 80-year-old former nurse who had been performing illegal, he couldn't even say it, who had been helping young girls since the 1930s and knew what to do. She lost one of her arms working in a factory during World War II, my mom continued. He had still performed her backstreet operation for young girls long after the war ended. Mom looked panicked and started to tremble. We didn't have any money to pay her. Rebecca, we were 15, and spent what money we had on our train tickets to get there. We found her house, an old slum house, 
a creepy Victorian terrace just outside the city center. She scared us when she opened the door, as she looked terrifying. Extremely tall for an 80-year-old woman. Almost six foot tall and only slightly hunched at the neck. She took pity on us for being so young. We explained that we had no money to pay, but really needed her help. Dad continued. She said that she understood we didn't have the money, but because of that, she would have to do her best. Do her best? I asked, perplexed. Yes, she said we may not have her full concentration. I felt ill at the thought of what was about to happen. Mom interjected. I'll spare you the details, Rebecca. She took us up these steep and narrow stairs to a back bedroom. And don't know I can't, she said as she broke down. She got the towels and the hot water and the implements and began the procedure. Even Dad started to tear up now. After about 20 minutes, Nell said something quite peculiar. She stepped back and said slowly, There, I think I've got it all. And she gave us a sideways glance that made your mom and I quite uneasy. And then she snapped at us and shouted, Now get out of here, you stupid kids, coming to me with no money. You dirty little beggars. Get out. And we ran out of the house and to the train station. She said, I think I've got it all. I repeated. That was quite simply disgusting. We thought that it was all okay as I didn't get any bigger. And nine months later, there was no baby, so your dad and I were relieved, said mom, and I felt a wave of calm after that revelation. We went to college, passed our exams, and started our working lives. Your dad and I married and bought our first house, and by the time that we had you, we were 30 and had a much better place in our lives to bring a baby into the world. I couldn't quite believe what I was hearing, and I asked them, Are you telling me all the memories of my brother are fake? I'm not going insane. I distinctly remember him helping me with homework, play fighting with me, sitting with us to eat at the table. Are you telling me there was only three of us at home as I grew up? Mom and Dad glanced at each other. Look, we don't really believe in all this paranormal silliness. I'm a logical man, said Dad, almost regretting what he was about to say. But since you were born... It's always felt as though we weren't alone in the house. I hate where this is going, I really do. Mom tells me to spare my dad having to vocalize the very thing he doesn't believe in. After you were born, strange things happened. Every night as your dad and I went to sleep, there'd be a heavy weight on the end of our bed. It's never gone away, and it happens every night to this day. Other things too... I left you for a moment in front of the TV when you were a toddler, and when I returned, you were choking uncontrollably. We had to take you to the hospital. They had no idea what had caused you to choke like that. When you were growing up, we would see you happily chatting away to someone having a one-sided conversation. We just thought that you had made an imaginary friend. It was all slowly slipping into place. So you're telling me that if you would have gone through with that teenage pregnancy, I would now have a 40-year-old sibling. Yes, that's right, darling, said Mom. We always felt there was someone else there, too, and didn't want to believe it, but when you said earlier about this older brother, it seemed to confirm these suspicions that we've had for 25 years. It all became so clear. My parents had been punished their whole adult lives for not having the fee to pay, one I'm Nell. I'm being punished by my older brother for the life he didn't get to have. I understand now what my mom meant when she said, You've never had an older brother. Not in this lifetime, anyway. Two nights ago, I found a new category on Netflix called Adventure Slash Intrigue. Containing a creepy new show which appeared to be one of those old text-based adventure games from the early 90s. The show appeared to know everything about me with stalker-like accuracy. Last night, a strange girl appeared in my flat. Some influencer making a show. Despite only three minutes passing, I had somehow broadcasted four videos of weird content to YouTube. 
different friends saw different videos, one of which led me to being fired from my job. I've always known the console I used to watch Netflix was handed down to me by my older brother, whom I had vivid memories from throughout my childhood. My world was shattered when it was revealed to me earlier today that I am an only child. I have no older brother. He was aborted when my parents fell pregnant under age at 15 and sought help from an 80-year-old illegal abortionist called one Arm Nell, who it's now clear didn't quite finish the job off as punishment for my parents not having the money to pay her. What a trip, hey? If only this was a Netflix show. But no, it's my life and it's ruined. After the revelations earlier today, my parents were intrigued about what I had seen and what had led me to call them. I spent over an hour telling them everything, how I had got fired, how my bank account had been drained, and how the game presented me with two options. Say one, to exit the game now and start to rebuild your life and career from scratch. Say two, to continue the next level tomorrow night and erase the damage of the past two nights. My mom suggested smashing the old PS3 console to pieces, but that would leave my personal life in tatters as it was currently. My dad suggested riding out the next level with them there for support. It can all be undone if we work together, he said. We loaded up Netflix again. The program loaded immediately as it had done earlier. No menu screen, straight to the chase. Static screen, blocky 80s VHS text. Loading next tape, 2.4. The familiar voice made itself known. Voice mode activated. Welcome to our new playable characters, mom and dad. My heart plummeted. I had inadvertently introduced my parents into this sick game. We start tonight's level with an audio clip. We waited. A minute passed. A long minute with the air full of anticipation. My Alexa, unplugged after the deputy music played over the past two nights, began playing the sound of a little boy crying. I'm in no way maternal, but my heart was breaking and my stomach not. We listened. Stop, it hurts, you're hurting me. I glanced at my mom. Her mouth dropped open like a drawbridge and horror filled her wet eyes. Dad, tell mom to stop. Mom, my legs are hurting. Dad, please stop. It worked the past two nights, so I tried it again and screamed, Stop! at the top of my lungs. Blissful silence. My parents looked, disgusted and horrified. My mother almost hyperventilating, seemingly paralyzed with shock. The voice returned along with a line of text on the TV screen. Dad, you said you never believed in paranormal silliness. Oh dear, oh dear Peter, you're about to believe. Silence. We waited. Rebecca, in order to complete the game and erase the damage of the past two nights, please select which parent you would like to abort. I laughed. I laughed because surely I can't be made to make such a decision. My laugh was erased and I realized that this was serious. Stop this. You can't make me choose something like that for a stupid game. This is not a stupid game. The calming BBC shipping forecast voice raised itself for the first time. It continued. If you don't choose, the computer will select for you. I panicked. I tried the pause game command again, but was informed that function was now disabled. With a violent jerk, my mother to my left grabbed her chest and wheezed a long, slow, agonizing wheeze. My eyes filled with tears. Dad panicked. Angela! Angie, darling! Angie, please! He rushed her to her, and she gasped for breath. Call an ambulance! Dad bellowed at me. Call it now! I dialed 999. Yes, ambulance immediately. My mom, she's having a heart attack. I barked my address down the phone and panic ensued, as we waited for the paramedics to arrive. Amidst the panic, the game continued. Cheesy showbiz game show music blasted through the Alexa at deafening volume against the backdrop of my mother gasping her last breath and my dad and I helpless, simply kneeling next to her waiting for help to arrive. The voice of the game returned. 
Congratulations, you've lost a life and completed the game. The events of the past two nights have been deleted. Check your online bank account. Go back to work as normal tomorrow. Everything's just as it was. But only if you agree to star in season two. I've lost my mom and that guilt is something I need to live with for the rest of my life. My life got back to normal but at a cost. My teenage mother aborted her unborn son. And he aborted her as revenge. Life is going well now. I got a promotion at work and I bought my own flat. My dad visits every weekend and there have been no more creepy interactions with my older brother. That is only because I have part of an agreement to uphold. For my life to remain normal, I need to ruin someone else's. Kiss Chase Season 2 Trailer Back after its mind-blowing first season, it's Kiss Chase. Anyone can be the victim. Anyone can be the star of the show. Anyone in the world. I sit in a dark room with a green screen behind me and a camera in front of me. There's a live counter on a monitor to my left, showing me how many millions of people worldwide are getting ready to watch. Here comes Jessica from a small town in Midwest America. I've got all of my notes on her. Her banking details are passwords. Her social media accounts including her secret Twitter account. She uses for trolling pretty celebrities. She cheated her way into university and I have solid proof that this information will jeopardize her lucrative graduate job offer. I know that she sells nudes online to creepy old men for extra cash. Unfortunately for Jessica, her boyfriend and her family don't. Get ready for broadcast in three, two, one.